So, this lab is going to be part two of lab number four. So, in part two of lab number four, I'm going to implement a really simple counter. Um, this isn't the counters we'll really use in real life, as we kind of will discuss them in class more, but this is how you might design a counter based on our, what we already know. So, we already know how adders work, and we've talked a bit about registers. So I've got a diagram here for what I've sort of designed, and you can see in the middle here I have a block, I have an adder block um, that will add four bits, and I also have a um, register of D flip-flop, so there's four of them acting as a register. I have two switches which input some numbers to the adder, and I have this binary 27 seg. So you haven't used this binary 27 seg block yet, it's a little more advanced than the BCD27 seg, as in it'll drive the seven segment display, both it'll drive both segments of the seven segment display. So, like we always start these, we unzip the um, base files, and or if you've been doing part one, you could just delete what you've already got. It's all the same. We're always using the same base files here. So. Again, open ioconnections.sch and ignore the other stuff up here because they're just required to use the seven segment. So, you can just follow the schematic. Uh, maybe I'll start with the add block. So, add four is available and not ACC or any of the other ones. Be careful. So, we'll put that here. And then I'll add the binary to seven seg, which is available from this first category. And we want the um, do you want two digit? No, just one. So we'll just use the one digit block here. We'll drop that down. So binary two seven seg can convert, um, whereas BCD to seven seg only did zero to nine, this binary to seven seg will also do um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and it'll convert them to hexadecimal numbers. So I'm then going to, under flip flop, put down an FD4RE block. Um, so this FD4RE, it has, it's a four bit D flip-flop, so it basically has four D flip-flops in it. And we can move this over a bit. If you want to have a quicker way to connect them, you can just drop it on and then move it over there. There you go. Um, and we'll connect each output to this binary 27 seg block. Again, I'll just drop it on quickly and move it out. Um, finally, you have to wire here. So we have the first output to D0. So what you can see it's doing is it's going to add some number. Um, and then you can it'll store that in a register. Sometimes it takes a few times. You want to make sure you get the order right. So if you keep getting those errors, it's often that things are too close together. Um, it might help move them out a bit, and then zoom in so you can get a better view. So D2. S2, D3, to S3. Um, you can wire seg A to the seven segment display, A, B, C, D, etc. E, F, G. Um, and again, in this case, we're going to display the same thing on both displays. Uh, so let's place a ground part and connect it to the common. Oops. And you have to be careful. There we go. So sometimes it's not connecting. We can just sort of move it around a bit. There we go. So it's all connected up. Looks a bit ugly, but it should work. Um, now we have to connect the input switches, so we're going to connect switch 1 to A0. Um, I'm just going to connect up two switches, 
switches here. You can connect up more if you want. I mean, nothing stops you, for example. So in the lab manual, A3 and A, A2 and A3 are connected to ground. I'll just wire them to a switch out of interest to show you. Um, we now need to wire the clock. So every time the clock goes, what we're going to do is register a new number here. Um, so you can see that every time the clock goes, the output of the adder will become the new input. So this is how we're going to do a really cheesy sort of at, uh, counter, is that because it'll just keep adding something to a number. And we just enable the clock always, so connect CE to VCC. Finally, we have a reset line here. So what we're going to do is connect the carry out, and this will happen um, when you count to 111, because there's a 4-bit adder, this is going to reset the chip. Um, so the schematic's a lot more clear if you look in the lab manual, and I highly recommend that because this is quite a mess. Um, and also the carry in, we should connect to zero to make sure it... So I'll just go down here to ground, copy it, and paste it up here. And if you want, you can sort of use control R to rotate it, which might make it easier to just drop it right on. Anyway, so that looks good. Save that, and again, go over to Design and hit Implement. Um, implement Design. And let that run. So once it runs, we'll do the program thing again. And it'll take a minute. In the meantime, I'll pull up the folder. Find program.bat. Um, again, you have to wait until we get a green check mark by implement design. If you run it early, it'll program the wrong file, and the old file will get programmed in. So it should take at least 30 seconds, sometimes longer, depending on how slow your computer is. And I'm just going to set the switches up to zero. You have to remember I made a small change. I connected. Um, all four of these switches up, so it'll add something to a number. So, for example, if I set this to one zero, we can see that just using one digit, it's actually adding eight to the number. So, for example, if I do this, we can make a real simple counter. Um, so, if you play with the switches, you can see the count incrementing by different amounts, and you should be able to describe how that count's incrementing. Again, remember this is a hexadecimal display, so we're now getting greater than 9. So 3, 4, um, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and well, there's nothing beyond F, 0. Um, so you have to remember now that that's a hexadecimal display, not the BCD one we were using earlier. As you go through the lab, the next thing you'll be doing is you have to replace this with a different part. So as I said, it has a reset input. The reset input on that one is synchronous, so it's only sampled on the clock edge. Um, the difference of the second design you're going to do is when we go to flip-flop here, we have this FD4CE part. And if you can just put it down in the exact same location, you don't have to change anything. This part has a clear input, not a reset. Whenever the clear input goes high, even for an instant, it clears the whole display, or the whole output. Do the same thing, implement the design, and see how the counter performs with that part instead of the synchronous part. So the asynchronous one means the clear input is instantly sampled. Um, you should see a bit of differences, and I want you to explain that again. If you look at the lab manual, the observation parts, that tells you everything sort of you need to be remembering. Um, and that's it for part two. So you can see this is sort of a cheesy counter. It works. It's not the most efficient way to do it. And we'll show some sort of better ways to do it later. But you can see that this counter design is functioning because it's counting up. And we've used a register to save the output of an adder and then just add the same number to it. All right, oops.